Oh my gosh, so we're live in Little Park. Here we are at CCTV's 37th anniversary. Woo! Rain Kramer, you were there at the very first one. Do you remember? Vaguely. Christine. Vaguely, in the garage. Yeah, in, in the Winooski. video cafe. Try not to miss a party. Exactly. So, and also we're just reminiscing about how you were an intern with us many years ago, although we can't remember that quite either. And you had some very special assignments. Tell us about those. Um, I had to cover a ribbon cutting in the old North End, um, and it was just, you know, you would call and say, be there at this time, there'll be some people there, make sure you get everyone. <laughs> and then the new um, intersection in Essex Junction, that was a big one. That's right. Very little detail, just go there and get something. <laughs> and then, I don't remember if I had a camera person or not. Um, you must have. Yes. I, I didn't. I don't know how great I was at the interviewing. Mostly I was just covering what was happening, but some every once in a while I had to do an interview. Well, that's what we do at CCTV. We cover what's happening. That's exactly, and that's why we love CCTV. Exactly. Now tell us a little bit about what you're doing now. You're in Costa Rica, right? You've come to visit from that beautiful country. I have. Um, I wonder if there's a public access there, because it would be amazing um, if there was. I'm going to look into it, though. Well, they say it's the happiest country in the world. Is that true, do you think? People are really happy. Yeah. It's really nice. It's much slower. Um, there's still a lot going on, but, you know, everyone has to remind themselves about the pure life, Pura Vida. So you just... If you feel yourself getting tense, you relax, because that's what's going on down there. And what about your impressions of coming back to Burlington? Well, coming home to Burlington, because you grew up here, and uh, walking around, especially now, post-pandemic. What are your observations? I always love coming back to Burlington. Um, obviously, the demographic, the diversity is so much different than when I was growing up here, so that's always great to see. Um, yeah, I feel like Vermont is the best place on earth, so I feel lucky that it's my home to come back to. I know, I'm so glad. So we, can I give you an assignment? Sure. Could you find me another person to interview? Yes, I would love that. Okay. I would love that. All right, bring okay. them over. Thanks. All right, okay. thanks, Rain Kramer. Bye. Bye. So we're here celebrating, as I said, CCTV's 37th anniversary. I'm Lauren Glendavidian, and we're at Little Park, which is a beautiful park in Burlington's Old North End at the intersection of Archibald Street and North Winiski Avenue, right across the street from our town meeting TV studios. And thanks to Wi-Fi that uh, VTEL provided to us for the neighborhood to use if they needed it. Oh my goodness, we are going live. Hello, my friends, how are you? I'm good, how are you? Good, so I'm gonna let you hold the microphones. <laughs> you got this. I got you. <laughs> How's it going? It's good, so tell us a little bit about, um, I'll hold the microphones. Sure, right? sure. So you can just be on the other side, because normally, mm. when you do your shows, the My Brother's Keeper shows, you're running the interviews. Yes. Indeed. Yeah. We are writing the shows. Yeah. yeah. So tell us about um, who are the most interesting people you've talked to this year. Even though it's been remote, you've had some, I think, really good and meaningful interviews. Tell us a little bit about those. Um, yeah, we have a m couple a people on the. I think one of the most memorable ones for my, for me personally, was the. I think it was a commissioner that came on to speak to us, and yeah, it was just nice to get his perspective of things that were going on at the time. Was that um, the Secretary of State, Jim Condos, or someone else, Commissioner, a city councilor? Or? Yeah, I think city councilor. Like that. Some, yeah. Something that had to do with the police department. Yeah, oh, I see, yeah. the police commission. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. that's right. Yeah. And can you tell me what was interesting for you about that? Uh, it was interesting. He was like uh, explaining more about like, how the police work. I mean, we didn't know that much stuff about uh, police in the community. Yeah. Yeah, and um, so it sounds like you've learned some things that you didn't know. Yeah, a lot. In, a lot, actually, a lot. Yeah. A lot. Yeah, and um, and also you lived in other countries. Uh -huh, yeah. Right. So you have some experiences and you have some perspectives that are new and different in mm -hmm. terms of what's happening here. So you want to talk a little bit about what you're learning and finding out by your experience here? I mean. Sure, we're from a different place and we haven't been here for very long, so I guess our, like, 
the people that also haven't been here for very long that are like me, I guess. Wow. In a way, doing these shows, like we get a perspective of the people that have been here for quite a while or like born here and whatever. So I think, yeah, it's nice to get that perspective and like I could kind of try to understand. Yeah, like, yeah, like trying to understand more about, about here. Yeah. Yeah, because there are things that when you live in a place a long time, you think everybody knows, exactly. right? And then when you come, when I moved here from New York City, mm -hmm. I found there was this whole kind of Vermont way of thinking that was not like I thought in New York City. Right. But I didn't know what it was right. until I ran into it, exactly. right? Yeah. Right. And then I was like, oh, that's what you think? <laughs> okay, you know, it's kind of a surprise. Yeah. For sure, for exactly. Sure. So um, you've been going to BHS. Yeah, this year in Macy's now. In Macy's. Yeah. And we were just saying um, that that's kind of a strange school experience, right? Yeah, but you know, it's better than nothing. <laughs> better than online, that's yeah. for sure. Uh -huh. Yeah. Better yeah. than online, yeah. So we've all been able to be in person together. For two days, yeah. Two, day, two, two days, days a week. week. Just two days a week? Yeah, yeah really strange too. <sighs> that seems like barely enough. It seems yeah. like a big tease to just go for two days. Yeah, but we are done now. Okay, School's day, over. Right? Yep. Yeah. Wait, what are you doing this summer? Uh, I'm trying to do a summer program in school and work too. Oh, yeah? But I'm not sure yet. Yeah, well, you just got out of school, yeah. right? So you're uh -huh. just figuring out. What are you going to do this summer? I um, got a trip going down to New York for like a month and then I'll be back and Ooh, continue working. Fantastic. Do you have family down there? My mom's friend, actually. Oh, great. Not family, just friends. Yeah, good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, That'll be fun. Yep. Get out of town. Well, thanks so much for your work. Thanks Thank for the you. My Brother's Keeper yeah. series. It's, Thank you, too. It's a big, well, we really appreciate it. And um, it's just fun to have you involved. Yeah. So thanks a million. Yeah, yeah thank you so much. I hope to do more. All right, good. Awesome. <laughs> Outside. Bye. Real, the real. Yeah, exactly. Oh, my gosh. It's so awesome. Ben Joseph. Oh, look it. Come on over here before you go. Ben Joseph, one of the long-running folks here that have been producing shows since we're up in that studio that we can oh, see. Oh, I remember here. that. Remember, remember your first show? I, I remember, I, not, well, I can't say I remember the first show, but I remember a lot of them. I it remember your questions were very long. Because <laughs> <laughs> you had a lot, you knew a lot, and you put them all in your questions. And I remember well, I, I said, I, I, shorten those up, Ben. I'm doing better now. Yes, you are. I'm doing, doing better now. I, I do the question, I make, I make outlines. And I show them to the guest, and I say, these are the questions I'm thinking of asking. You tell me if something you don't want to hear or something, would you want to change, make additions, corrections? And I found that the shows go much better now. Yeah. Because yeah. they've had a chance to think about what I'm going to ask. And so no one's surprised or embarrassed, and it, it makes for a, good, a better, better show. And what have you been focusing on with your programs? Just let folks know. Well, well... I've been in a lot of, there's been a lot of talk about uh, legalization of marijuana and the consequences of marijuana consumption. I'm about to do another interview with a doctor who's been very familiar with this stuff. And I think it's something the public should have a better awareness of. Yeah. Yeah. So there's, you know, that's what I'm working on right now. And you're also on the North Hero Select Board, is that right? I'm on the Select Board and the Planning Commission. Oh, wow. Yeah. Is yeah. That a, are you allowed to be on both, apparently? Yes. Yes, you're allowed to be on both. In fact, yes, I'm allowed to be on both. It's been uh, it's been interesting. I bet it has. How how do you think the North North Hero Select Board might be different than the Burlington City Council, for example? <laughs> oh yeah, no? you you didn't tell me you were going to ask that there. question. I'm not going there. No, I. Uh, no. Well, I think it's you know it's a three person select board. It's a small town, not a big city. It's a five person. Oh, it's five. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. See, a little civics lesson. <laughs> yes, indeed. Yeah, it's uh, it's interesting. It's very interesting. I'm uh, and now we've got all this stuff going on about what's going to happen with all this uh, federal money that's going to be available to the, to the municipalities. Yeah. And so we have to decide, you know, how we're going to do that. That's going to be hard. So, d does. Do people in North Hero treat you like you're from away? Oh yeah, sure. I, I you know, I, I, yeah. I mean, I've only been here 30 years, so now, yeah, you know, they actually say that. You know, oh yeah, he's from away. You know, that's okay. 
That's all right. It doesn't hurt my feelings. No, I'm sure it doesn't, but it is kind of a, it's a fascinating phenomenon that we have, even if we've been here a short time or a long time. Yeah. We're defined by whether we're in or out. Yeah, well, that's just something. That's, that's, yeah, that's the way it is. I mean, it doesn't always mean it's hard to get things done, but sometimes it does. Sometimes you wonder. Yeah, yeah sometimes you wonder. Although, you know, Howard Dean appointed me to the, to the bench, bless his heart. If I'd only been here... About five and a half years, and uh, it's been okay. I, 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 it was really a great job. I, I loved it. Well, and also you got to make TV at Channel 17, Town Meeting TV. You didn't even live here like a year. That was the best part. Exactly. Because <laughs> we're about access. So thank you so much. Thank you. It's good to see really you. Really appreciate your support. See you all. Yeah, thanks so much, Ben. So yeah, it's been 37 years since our first show, since we persuaded the Vermont Public Service Board to that the cable company should set aside these community channels, the public and the educational and government access channels for public purposes. And uh, 37 years ago tonight, give or take a couple days, we were watching some hapless cable company person try to put our tapes in the playback machine so that they would air. And we were sitting around at the video cafe watching that happen. And finally, the images flickered on and public access TV was born in uh, this part of Vermont. And now there are 25 centers all over the state who are considered essential services, funded by cable subscribers and community supporters. And it's just a very exciting time for us. I think, you know, there are a lot of threats, but here we are, there's a lot of community supporters. And, you know, Rain Kramer obviously didn't do her job to find me another person to interview. So I'm gonna go off and let Aiden do a little panning while I find another guest. Hold on one second. Hello. It's like been two years. And then um, I've got Erin, her mom, Erin Malone. Would you mind coming over here so we can have a quick, quick little interview? Yeah, come on over here. We're going to pan. Yeah, yeah, right here. Erin, Erin Malone, chair of the CCTV board. Thank you so much. Of course. Good to yeah. see you. Great to be out. Love the Old North End. What a spot. Well, I never realized that this tree actually had grown up as much as it had since they built this park. Wow. Did you know that this park was named after George Little and Elaine? And they were big supporters of the Community Land Trust, oh, which nice. owns this park or gave it to the city. And this was a building. This spot that we're sitting on was a building. Oh, interesting. And there was a man here who, when we were moving big, heavy furniture up into the first studio we had, we wrangled him to help us put that Fantastic. heavy plywood up those stairs. Always helping neighbors in the old North End. I know. Yeah. Now, Erin, you are too. Your Momo's Market is your baby. That's my baby, working to help neighbors. Yeah. yeah. Connecting people. Connecting people on the corner of North and North Willard. And how's it been going the, during and post-pandemic? Well, it's not exactly post-pandemic, but how's it been? Um... It's been a long year with a lot of wild cards, and I guess we just kind of focus on what we always do, which is just connecting with people, being safe, yeah. and getting them the things they need. So yeah. it's been good. It's That's been all right. It. Yeah, it's been all right. Yeah. And then tell us, just tell everybody a little bit why CCTV is important to you. CCTV is important to me because it's a place for um, community members to learn about, <laughs> to access local government through meetings and voting and also to um, find a place to share their stories, whatever they are. It's also one of the few, like this park, non-commercial public spaces mm -hmm. in the city of Burlington and in our community. So we yeah. love CCTV and we're, we're here to support. Well, we really appreciate all your support. Thank you so much. Course, LG, happy 37th year. 37th year. Whoa. And thank you, Josie Marie, for helping. Hello. Hello. Oh, well. There you go. Oh my gosh, that's so great. Okay. All right. We'll see you. Yeah, have some more chips. That's okay. great. Oh. Oh. oh, there's some bird food. Hey, hold on one second. I'm going to talk to Barb. Barb, come on over. I'm so glad you did. I wanted to come and say hi. Oh, I'm so come on over because 
One of the things I love about you is that you go to California in the winter, but yes. you still watch the South Burlington City Council. I was just talking to Charlie about that and about how grateful I am that you all have figured out a way, because I was there live the other night for a few minutes, but then I had to go somewhere else, and then I could go home and watch the rest from home, and whenever I can't get there, you make it happen. So thank you. You're welcome. Town Meeting TV. That's what I came to say is thank you, Town Meeting TV, and we're grateful. So what's happening in South Burlington? You're getting a new new city manager. We're very excited. Jessie Baker starts on July 1st. Yeah. And um, I've met her just in passing, but she seems wonderful. And she comes with, you know, great background in, in government across, uh, across the state of Vermont. And I think she'll bring a, you know, it's always good to have a new energy. So yeah. it'll be, I think it'll be a, be a good thing and we've got lots of things happening in the city and we'll just keep moving in in a positive direction. Well South Burlington actually is a relatively young city isn't it and it's only had maybe three or four city managers if I'm not correct. Um, I've been there how many years? 15 years so Kevin would, was the second um, Jesse will be the third, but I wasn't really involved until yeah. the last few years. So Kevin's the only one I've really known, and Tom Hubbard is a great deputy city manager, and we're losing them both. Yeah. So. Well, Chuck Hafter was before him, and Mike Flaherty, who was one of the sort of on the first councils, was a, um, a, helped us found Town Meeting TV. Wow. And in fact, I'll never forget, and he's pretty, you know, I, I don't know if there's a street named after him, but he's like that kind of guy, <laughs> right? But I'll never forget, I was having a hard time negotiating with the cable company for some things. And um, Mike went in, and I sat there, and he and the cable guy, they settled it in a few minutes. Great. I know. That's what we need. I know, and I just watched that. It's like, okay, good. Sometimes you got to have those two guys just sitting there getting it done. Got to have your friends help you out. Got to have your friends help you out. Absolutely. Absolutely. So South was a big player in starting Town Meeting TV. Well, may yeah. it ever be so. Yes. And may Town Meeting TV ever be so. Well, thank you for your yeah. support. We are we are glad you are here. Thank you. So I, I talk about you in California. People say, what are you doing? It's 3.30 on Monday afternoon. I'm going to Town Meeting TV. What do you mean? <laughs> yeah, I got to go to town. You know, I've got to go, go to city council tonight. Exactly. Yeah. So, That's and it's great. all because you make that happen. Thank you. So thank you. And thanks for right. stopping by. You betcha. Happy it. anniversary. Thanks. Okay. Bye okay. Bye. See ya. All right, so there's one of our big fans from South Burlington. And you know, you're panning around, you're seeing some of the great people that are here. Look at those beautiful people. Kathleen Swanson, I need, yeah, we could get Margaret. I just want to show, show, I just want to show Kathleen Swanson. Kathleen. How are you? I'm good. So we have a challenge grant, right? We're in the middle of our anniversary campaign and we have a $10,000 challenge grant and I would encourage everybody to go online. If you support free speech, local media, and the work we do at Town Meeting Television, please go to cctv.org and make a donation. It's Look at all these beautiful people here, and we're making it happen, getting the information to the people, because information is power. Well, and now more than ever. Now more than ever, yeah. exactly. The local, getting the... Uh, the municipal meetings, the neighborhood planning assemblies, all of these things are so important to the health of Burlington and the other communities that we also serve. And uh, during the pandemic, we brought those public hearings to the people. I know, and archived them, recorded them live and archived them, and yeah. as did community cent media centers all over the state. That's right. So it's been a great it's been a great year actually for community media I have to say. Yes. I mean it's been a tough year for everybody but we've been able to keep democ the wheels of democracy greased. Exactly. Exactly. So and in the meantime, we're archiving uh, our 37 years of material and um, we need money to help support that too because that's history. We want to archive the history of the greater Burlington area. 41,000 programs. 41,000 programs. There's some gems. There's some gems. <laughs> there, yeah. Of people here when they were much younger. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. All right. Yeah. Find okay. me another guest. Yeah. That would be really good.
So Aiden's behind the camera, Aiden White, and you can't see him, but I just want to say, Aiden, that having this year especially to work with you has been fantastic. And, you know, he's making this live thing happen out here right now, just making it happen. And all the meetings that we cover and all the productions that we do, you're just so creative and it's just a pleasure. And I think you started as an intern, didn't you, or a volunteer? Or You started as a volunteer and worked your way up and now you were a film producer and now you're running CCTV productions and that's the way we do it here. We just try and build these pathways of success for people to be successful and speak their mind, including our beautiful Margaret Harrington. Margaret, hello, how are you? Six feet apart, better than six feet under, right? <laughs> There's a motto. Oh my gosh, it's great to see you. Well, as you know, hello Aiden out there. <laughs> it's been 14 years since I've been doing shows here on uh, at uh, community television and town meeting TV and most of, important of all, the Center for Media and Democracy, which I appreciate so much. And uh, so I'm continuing my Nuclear Free Future shows, doing one on Monday. I've continued my focus shows, and uh, I'm hanging out, living here in Burlington, and uh, getting by. It's, it's a sad time, and yet it's a triumphal time now that people are getting together here in the little park right opposite where the studio is, the closed studio is, and of course we have a, a, heart, a heart broken about the north, closing of North End Studios, which was so much a part of the building and had so many wonderful programs for everybody in the community. So, well. Tell me what um, this year, some of the interesting programs that you've done that really stand out in your mind, the interviews that you've done. Well, um, at the moment, I prefer to talk about the, the uh, not the estrangement, but the fact that uh, my grandchildren and my my second daughter and her husband are so are so far away in another state, and I can, I have not been able to see them yet. And my granddaughter graduated from high school, and uh, she you know there was no ceremony for that, and uh, we couldn't go to that. So uh, it's been a difficult year as far as being separated from friends and family. And so uh, it, it, it's also given me a different perspective on how things are done. You're, you're, in fact, Center for Media and Democracy, or what I used to call Channel 17, has changed so much. And we're adapting to the changes in the uh, programs. You know, for instance, you had a WCAX article about vaccines being given at the uh, the Riverside Health Center, which I have attended. Well, I've attended the health centers in Vermont for over 15 years. And uh, the people who were treated there were not given the vaccine at all. But suddenly four millionaires, millionaire politicians, show up at the community health center. And they have a poster on the wall about giving vaccines out. But uh, that, that's the whole point for me, for the Center for Media and Democracy, is to get the, the truth out and the full story out about what's really going on. Because politics, in fact, formal politics, where unfortunately all the millionaires are now, is only a very small part of our lives. Our lives, our living and breathing lives here on this earth is very different. It's the e communication between our loved ones and our community. And that is still going on even through this terrible uh, coronavirus, which has hit uh, other places much worse than Vermont, but it's, it's horrible here in Vermont with the, clo with the, uh, the senior centers and the, uh, the nursing homes. The nursing home story has, will be told in the future by young journalists who will come forward and say what really has been going on in the nursing homes in Vermont and all over the country, and how the aged population is such a, uh, a, a, a so far down in the priorities of uh, of our nation, even though we have politicians who are in their 80s and are still carrying on with careers of of uh, politics. And one of my shows coming up will be the uh, the return of the term limits. Uh, uh, people 
who are advocating for term limits in elected offices. There is some reason why offices are, people are elected to offices for two years or six, six years, an enormous six years. So um, I'm looking forward to programs that I'm going to be doing in the future. And um, I appreciate very much uh, being able to do my programs on Channel 17, Center for Media and Democracy, for the past 14 years for my program Nuclear Free Future, for the past six years for my program Focus. And um, so it's so wonderful to have you working with us. It's just been a joy. We're really, really grateful. Thank you, thank you, Lauren. And I appreciate your presence very much. And I appreciate the staff's presence. I, I miss, uh, I miss seeing uh, you all in person and doing the shows in the studio. It's, it, it's been a, in a, an enlarging time. I realize for you, you guys, and, and also, and many of my friends there. So uh, it's uh, a mixed feeling I have today, you know, seeing some familiar faces here, yeah. but uh, um, so best of uh, best of, great to see you, Lauren, and looking well, and best of luck in the as as it's it's going into the thirty eighth year, right? Yes, oh my gosh, it's, I know it's hard to believe. I know yeah. it's hard to believe I was ever that young. Yeah, but thank you. Let me ask you, what what is the major for you, what is a major personal thing about this this year? Um, well, I think that, that just the tremendous loss has been uh, quite overwhelming. Um, you know, just a sense of loss of the whole period. I will say I've kind of liked not, I've liked the retraction. I've liked sort of um, having no fear of missing out. You know, everybody's been home, so we're all home. And I think that it's very exciting, actually, because I'm an extrovert, to come back out into the world. You know, I think there's some of us who are just happy to stay in this, you know, this small universe. But I like being out in the world, and I'm so energized to see everybody. And, um, and I just am incredibly proud of the work that the folks at CCTV have done, you know, my coworkers in keeping democracy going during a very difficult time they've been they've figured it out really quickly how to get those meetings online within like three days by March 15th we'd figured it out and people have been in their bedrooms running meetings you know I mean a lot of these people are young and they live at home or they live with roommates and they're running a TV channel virtually from their bedrooms. And that, I think, is amazing. And Megan O'Rourke, who runs Town Meeting TV, has done, I think, an incredible job holding everybody together. You know, I mean, I get some of the credit, but really she and the team have done all that work. And I've done a lot of policy work, and we've had some good success in the legislature. And I think, you know, within the next couple of years, we can restructure telecommunications taxes so that we have other funding sources besides cable for this work. So that's the part. So we actually, I think, have made some real progress in the past 15 months. So I'm very proud, I'm very proud of that, yeah. How do, you, how do you look forward into the future? What, what, what changes are you going to drag into the, uh, not drag, but bring, but in? bring in? Well, I think we'll see, you know, we'll be um, going back into the office in, after Labor Day. So in the meantime, we have this little outdoor studio because of this great wireless connection that VTEL has given us, donated us. So I think that doing more outdoor TV is going to be great because I, I think the studio is really a dead zone personally. So I just like the idea of us being outside. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, I'll look forward to that, Lauren. Yeah, it'll be fun. <laughs> Thank you, Margaret. Thanks for asking. Thank you. Give my best to Lenny. Yeah. Thanks. All right, Margaret Harrington, that's fantastic. So um, Aiden, how are you holding up? Pretty good? All right, let's see, is there anyone else? Yeah, let's interview Miles. Miles wants to do an ethnography of CCTV. We're gonna ask him about that. How are you? Good, how are you it's doing? nice to see you. Likewise, likewise, thanks for having us. Oh. Hey everyone. Yeah, we're so <laughs> glad you're here. Yeah, absolutely. So um, I was just thrilled that you're thinking of doing an ethnography of yeah. CCTV. So tell us a little bit about that project. Yeah, so the idea is because uh, 
I got to know Dan Hagens through Luis Vivanco, and then your name comes up a lot. And the trajectory of, um, number one, this being a local institution, number two, I think with my own interest of wanting to become more active in the community and looking at places where community gathers, where, mu where media is gathered, um, and then teaching a class called Community Media and wanting to do a case study about CCTV, it seemed like a natural progression to say, okay, what's the deep dive? What are the everyday workings of a, of a local uh, institution like this? And, and um, what can we learn about community development or community building through a place like this? And then, so the idea of the ethnography is, uh, as we know, it's you know making sure that the perspective is told from whose perspective it belongs to. So making sure, putting yourself in somebody else's shoes for layperson's terms. Um, and uh, really just like a deep history of, you know, how this came to be. And, um, you know, it's just like, it's a, it's a local treasure. <laughs> well, that's nice of you to say. Thank you so much. Because it really is. I mean, you think about the archives that we have and, and, the, and really the community weaving. I mean, sometime we were talking about the other day that you know community media is you know media is what we do but it's really just the tool for community building you know and, and I've heard Megan say this too which is the idea of um, you know you maybe don't need to watch the full meeting and maybe Dan said this too you don't need to always be fully engaged but it's nice to know that it's there and if it can prompt somebody to go out and join like you watch it and you think oh that meetings happening maybe I should just go to it and obviously the pandemic has put a little bit of, of, a, of a hold on things like that. But, um, but I think that the, the philosophy of the process and not the product is really um, something that we've lost sight of in, in media. So I think it, it's, it's quite relevant to maybe revisit that, um, which is really important. And then, you know, uh, the archive itself, I think, is, is the one thing that is like, if we're going to talk about um, the everyday, there's no, I don't think you can turn to any other place <laughs> other than that archive to get a good glimpse at what the everyday has been like in Burlington for the last 30 years. Yeah. And it's not sound bites. No, it's, it is gavel to gavel. It's gavel and to it gavel. It's just the meetings. I mean, it's the community events and the interviews. It's, yeah, people like this showing up, get, providing a space, people talking, and, uh, you know, and now I know that this is probably going to live, and who knows, however long from now, maybe somebody needs a sound bite, and... You know, it's like, you just don't know. I mean, look at what happened with the Bernie footage. Yeah, that was awesome. <laughs> I know. Well, and that happened also with the Howard Dean, when Howard Dean ran for president. Um, the Howard, the, you know, the opposition bought all the tapes. It was tapes then, and then the Dean campaign, and then the Times came and watched it. And it was just, it gave a profile of Howard that was very different than what the prevailing idea was at the time. Well, and get this, I'm working on a, a project about the Our Family Boathouse. Oh, yeah, and, and it's like, type in Our Family Boathouse in, in, in the archive, and what shows up? Interview from 1994 of Ida Hour, the grandmother of Charlie and Christine, and it's like, or the mother, sorry, and it's like, my God, like, imagine is. if that footage wasn't out there. Yeah. I mean, that, that's going to bring so much texture and allow the story to be told in a way that just wouldn't be able to be told in 2021 yeah. you know and Rob Ryber did that I remember and Rob worked with us was so good just sitting on the porch and talking to people <laughs> that's, it. really that's good important that. and again provide the space you know this place has provided a lot of space for people to talk you know and, and I think um, you know talking to Megan a lot too about you know the idea of free speech you know and, and allowing people to be able to you know express their points of view and then allowing people to have different points of view you know it's like we're, we're facing a really interesting time right now um, with how divisive things have gotten and how um, it's, be, it's become soundbite culture. And that's quite, uh, it's hard. It's hard to, to dissect any information on a soundbite. Well, I think it's also become very, we've become very narrow in the information we consume. And so we're not, I think culturally, we're less tolerant of views that we don't subscribe to. Yes. Echo chamber. Yeah. Echo chamber is very easy, right? You know, your your bottomless feed on Instagram is going to express all the same values and viewpoints. And it's very rare to, to get out of that. You'd have to very intentionally um, follow people that have very um, uh, different viewpoints to, to be able to get a, a broad swath, uh, cast a wide net, so to speak. So. 
And I think that is really the challenge for community media in this period is to keep those conversations, put them, make them very central to the work, invite people with different points of view to the work, and host those conversations. And so it's interesting. And I, and I, I've had, uh, Megan did this in my class when she comes and speaks to the class, but she is a, has a really good knack of asking other people questions when they're supposed to be asking them questions. Yeah. So I'm gonna ask you a question. Sure. Okay, so talk about having an event like this in this space and coming out of the pandemic, how does it feel? It's great, well, it's great to be outside in this little park. You know, I was just saying to someone when we started the Tammy TV in 1990, this was a building and it's been this park and it's sort of, a, you know, not, the most, I mean, people hang out of this park, but this tree is so big. I mean, I didn't even think it's shady and beautiful. So I'm really happy to have everyone out. And it's really great. It's a kind of real snapshot of all the different people that are involved in what we do. Yep. Um, we've got like a longstanding volunteer mm -hmm. here. Oh, yeah. My oh my gosh. Oh, my there you go. Here, Miles, here. you interview her. All oh, right, no, yeah. she's, she's gonna freeze up. That's all right, she's not gonna freeze up. all she's right, close. all right. I don't know if I don't I see. Is I'm not good with an interview with a mic in my hand. I'm normally behind the camera. I get it, so. I get it. It's all right. I'm gonna try to be there too. All right, Jordan, give us some context. Where are we? What brings you here today? Yeah, we're at the little park across from the studio. Uh, they're hosting their 37th annual, uh, you know, or anniversary rather, uh, and just gathering with people and having a good time, uh, keeping safe, staying outside, but enjoying, you know, everything they were able to accomplish this year. Great. Okay, and uh, quickly moving along, if we're going to talk about your role and what you've done with CCTV, what brought you to CCTV? And, and, and well, I guess I, I should rephrase. Uh, Center for Media and Democracy or uh, Town Meeting TV, you know, talk about your history here and um, why you're, uh, yeah, you've already talked about why you're here today, but your history. Yeah, uh, two years ago now, I started interning with them for the live at 525 shows on Friday evenings. I had Uber over here from my dorm. Uh, it was great, really loved that. And I did that for about a year and a half, uh, also helping with, so just the live shows, doing that over the summer, also doing the semester, and then uh, pandemic hit, that kind of stopped. Uh, so just kind of stuck around. Uh, and then in my spring semester at UVM, worked on a project somewhat through UVM, but also with CCTV, uh, with Winooski students, um, just making community media uh, between Burlington and Winooski. And so there's Dan, I think you, you should meet Jordan. Because if, if, have you met Jordan in person? Yes, Dan, come talk to us, please. Let's get you. It's nice to see you, not not on a Zoom. Yes, uh, I know. Or, yeah, how's your project going? It's good. Uh, we kind of wrapped up the interviews at the end of the semester, and then now we're just kind of editing the footage and seeing seeing what happens uh, as we head into the summer. I, I had uh, I had this morning. I had uh, a two hour long coffee with Luis. Very nice. And he was very impressed with all of you. So. Yeah, we sent him our like uh, progress report and how the project was going last uh -huh. week. So he uh -huh. recently. Uh, Heard cool. about how things are going, but yeah, it's been great. Great. Well, I'm looking forward to seeing your final. You're doing making videos, right? Yeah, we're taking those interviews uh, and putting them into some sort of video, uh, kind of over the summer. Um, myself and the two other UVM students, we we're all at this point split up since we've all graduated, but we're still working on something with the two Winooski High School students, uh, and we hope to do something at some point this summer, some sort of public screening. And how's it going getting you back into the community? Are you doing something in Winooski that where people that aren't part of it can can see it? Yeah, that's our plan. Uh, we did about eight interviews with people, and so we want to invite them back to whatever public screening. And then we also just want to invite community members, whether they're related to the school district or not, um, just you know, community members outside of the district. It'd be great to have uh, everyone see what's going on. Yeah, it's, I think it's this year is really good too because it's the legacy year. They're working toward the hundredth anniversary. Of, of Winooski and their theme is empowerment and opportunity and it's so your project fits right nicely into what the legacy group is trying to pull off. I don't think they know what you're doing. No, yeah. <laughs> so Jordan, what is a, a lesson that you've learned from Dan Dan's work? Yeah, I think a lesson from your work is just, you know, making sure not to take from the community but actually working with the community you talk about with photographs you know you don't just take photographs of people you actually work with them to make photographs oh, um, and that's something we tried to incorporate 
in our project, uh, and also Miles was brought into our class. I'd taken a class with Miles at UVM a couple times. I know, it's very incestuous, this whole <laughs> yes. CCTV. It all comes full circle, my friend. Right. Um, yeah, but to just, you know, we didn't want to just go into the community with a camera, and knowing how intimidating that could also be, um, we wanted to actually, like, collaborate with the people, sounds, um, which I'm was great. I'm you're, glad you're making that distinction. Yes, exactly. <laughs> You're going to want to take this mic away from me, otherwise I... Well, I think you're doing great, but I didn't want to leave you hanging. Thank you. You're thank you, Miles. Sweet. No, thank you. It's really I'll, great. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, like I said, uh, hopefully here to stay, so great. thanks thanks for calling me over. Oh, my gosh. Providing the space, as we say. Well, anthropologists unite. <laughs> yes. That's sort of my feeling. It's yeah. great to see you. Yeah, you too. It's thanks great so to see you. Coming. Yeah, I'm glad I could be here. Yeah, it really is. So have some chips. Yeah, All absolutely. that in a bag of chips. Yeah, absolutely. All right, you can take... Okay, that's fine. Is anthropology your major? No, I, I majored in film uh, with a minor in applied design and music. Um, nice. So just interested in anthropology, but stayed with, you know, studied film. Yeah, it's a big yeah. umbrella. Yeah. <laughs> One of our success stories. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Thanks. It's great to see yes, you. you too. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, have some chips. I mean, we have chips. We don't have regular food. Shay, come on over. Dan, one of our founders. Oh. Did you throw your weight around during your interview? Um, I didn't throw much weight around. I was no. waiting for Kathleen to come out with a little shot of whiskey or something. <laughs> it always used to make the interviews go easier. I guess you're not doing it out here in public. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know where one the, of the stash secrets, is. One of the secrets of Channel 17 that, you know, and, and town meeting TV that you just don't know. Yeah, that we, we grease the wheels. That's what that is. Oh, okay, boy. I, got a, I, got a, I guess this is the new tequila. Trail. The new tequila. Exactly. It'll rot your brain just like alcohol. Believe me. So, Shay Totten, I think you know. Shay, welcome. Thank you. Thank you. It's great to be here. Happy birthday, everybody. Thank you very much. Wonderful. Yes, happy birthday. Yeah, Dan is, was um, there. We had it at the Video Cafe, the first one. 1980 what? Four. I know. That was a great night. I'll never forget that night. <laughs> and, you know, one of the things that Shay's been doing is working with local media and journalists all around the country. Uh -huh. And um, I think you have something to say about the timeliness of community media today. <laughs> what comes around goes around. You know, what, what, what once was old is new again. I mean, it's, what's fascinating is that what you're seeing in with sort of the collapse of sort of local journalism, you know, in many cases, and, and the, this idea of news deserts, is that what's happening is actually community journalism or and helping sort of put the power of storytelling into the hands of the community itself uh, is actually now becoming really the thing within, within local journalism and is actually seeing as the model by which you can create sustainable local models for journalism. Sort of not just public access, but like general sort of digital, hyper, hyper local digital news sites. Mm -hmm. So it's fascinating. And this is where like philanthropic money is going at the local level, the national level. People are, are awake and realizing that this kind of both just local storytelling, but also visual and, and sort of storytelling um, is crucial and critical. Um, and it's not just who tell, not just who is in the story, but who tells the story. And I think that's also part of you know community media and sort of the tenets of it was really sort of putting the power of this media and this sort of civic engagement into the hands of those folks who are often most impacted by the stories that are. So that you're not just reporting on something, but it's actually working with the community and they're telling their stories. And that's kind of been what public access has been about. Uh, but yeah, increasingly it's, it's becoming important that they're marginalized people that don't have to have their story told for them. They, they have a chance to. Yeah, I mean, and that's, you know, and that's, it's long overdue. And what's amazing is to sort of see is like, you know, that there's so many lessons and sort of, you know, this, what I sort of bring to these conversations at the national level, but that are happening in local places, whether it's Colorado or Ohio or Detroit or wherever, is that this kind of model, like, you know, they'll say, well, how do we do this? Like, well, do you have a public access station? Like, in your name, you should maybe collaborate with them. They have training and tools available. They could be training your reporters. They could be training some of your community members. In fact, they might already be people have shows based on the topic you want to cover. And so, they're like, oh, you know, hadn't thought about that because it seems to be this sort of, it, it sort of fell to the background. It was sort of became part of civic infrastructure that was sort of not really, didn't get its due. And now it's sort of coming back again that this is sort of, you know, what we were, you know, what was being envisioned here in the 80s was, you know, not just so forward thinking that it was 
for its time, but like it's come back again after we've tried all these other models that collapsed, <laughs> you know, right. because everyone kept trying to get bigger and bigger and bigger, thinking that was the way to make things sustainable long term. Um, but that was a house of cards. And so now, you know, a lot of communities are paying the price for it. But, you know, hopefully there's this way to kind of fill that gap. It's a long way to go still. But in a place like Vermont, especially in Burlington, we have a, we have a strong access network that can kind of help buttress against some of that, um, those news deserts and that news information sort of vacuum. So you're keeping track on the national level of these projects? In what capacity? Do you just go into towns and find out what, what they're doing or...? No, so for up until February, I was working for a national um, working for a national project called the Compass Experiment, which was a partnership between McClatchy News and Google, on on doing digital startups in communities that in underserved communities where there had been a, a loss of information, a loss of news, and then since then, I also do I do consulting work with other organizations that support news sites like that in other parts of the country, and a lot of it's on basically trying to help them think through like how do they do outreach, how do they do community engagement, um, and to both as a sustainable revenue model, but also as a way to do better journalism. I know, I know. It's it's very exciting work, and it's good to know that it's come around again. It's been it's hard to sort of say oh what we're doing is new and shiny because we've been doing it for four decades. <laughs> but, it, you know, it is it, the function of building community using media is now more than ever more important. Well, the whole culture has become very different than it was 40 years ago. I mean, the young generation is so um, connected with Black Lives Matter and the whole, like in Winooski, the school, the whole school system is all the kids are, it's an anti-racism. Um, focus and it's coming up against the school boards and it's really interesting what's what's happening with that next generation yeah they're very um conscious of the opportunities we have to have a better kind of life than we do now i mean i mean i think that that's i mean i'm not putting it in the most accurate way but it it it's, makes me hopeful when i see my daughter and your kids the work that they're doing to build community in a meaningful way. Right, exactly. And, and that's, and, and to sort of see this, they're seeing this as a vehicle and they can see themselves reflected in this kind of work. And, you know, and it is funny because like it's hard to sort of say like, gosh, so what we've been doing all this time is now new again. It's, it's kind of, you know, you should have been like, wait a minute, how does that happen? But at the same time, there's still ways to improve and always like, yeah. and, and, you know, and making sure that you're, you're actually reaching all the people who really should have a voice and should, you know, should be reflected and, and telling important stories. Because I think part of what we also forget is not just about the stories, but, you know, what we also know from the archives is that, you know, this is also part of like archiving, like on an ongoing basis, the ongoing story and, and the ever evolving story of a community. And especially here where there is so much dynamic change just because there's so many colleges, because because of, of, of new Americans and sort of, and being a refugee resettlement area, there's this constant dynamic where new businesses and new, and new, and new families are coming in all the time. And that, so the story almost has to be retold consistently to, to new people, but not in a, in a stale way. And this helps to kind of, you know, provide that. And, and often sometimes be a way to tell stories back home, you know, wherever home might be um, from whence they came. It's a way to sort of, you can share this uh, now because of the internet, <laughs> you can share this information more rapidly and almost instantaneously. They could almost watch live depending on the time of day, right? So it's, it's, it's a powerful medium that, you know, um, you know, that, uh, that you know still has a, there's still a lot of issues in terms of ensuring its long-term success you know and and support and sort of and that sort of awareness that it is part of that civic infrastructure and i think that's our next challenge yeah, you know is. is part of that it's, so it's not taken for granted in that way but actually seen as this sort of new fabric of how we actually don't just tell stories but actually engage make decisions come together um and you know try to plan forward Thank you. That's beautifully said. Thank, thank you. you, Shay. You're welcome. And thank you, Dan. And thank, thank you. you for watching. Thank you for uh, making this thing continue for 40 years. Or well, more. it's really not because just of me. It's all the people that have ever worked here, and that so many of them are here. So it's been it's been our pleasure. Yeah, it's great. Yeah. Thank you. Who's on camera? This is Aiden White, Man Wonder, right there. It's fantastic. So thanks so much for watching. Happy anniversary. Happy free speech. Media for the people and by the people. Town Meeting TV and CCTV 
Center for Media and Democracy. Thanks for watching.